A recent study of females convicted of crimes showed a disheartening correlation of racial injustice in the legal system. The lighter a convict's skin, the shorter her prison sentence, and the less time she had to serve, according to researchers at Villanova University. Racism in the legal system. That's our show this week on American Dream. I'm your host, Nisa Islam. White skin is the standard of beauty. How do we know this? All over the world, women and more and more men are lightening their skin. Even if they're light, if they're not white, it's not light enough. Watch these commercials. Face it, life gets better. Here's a breakthrough from the expert in skin whitening. Skin White Whitening Face Cream. As early as two weeks, you'll achieve your skin's most natural, whitest white. That's 99% whiter than the leading brand. Whiter, better. We can prove it. From the skin whitening expert, Defy Color. Four is my lucky number. I graduated after four years. Just before my fourth interview, I realized that the obstacle to obtain my dream job was my skin. Discover fair and lovely multivitamin with four essential vitamins. B3, E, A, and C for total fairness. Lemma reporting live from Egypt. Great job. What are you doing at four? I told you four is my lucky number. Fair and lovely multivitamin for total fairness. I asked Brian Becker, head of the Answer Coalition, act now to stop war and end racism, to explain this obsession with white skin. It's a complex set of reasons, but a ruling class, when it develops power and property, also develops other associated institutions that govern society. Schools, religious institutions, uh, all sorts of cultural norms that develop. The definition of what is good, the definition of what is beautiful, uh, has to do with the reflection of the values and imaging of the ruling class itself. So in any society, the ideas of a society are the ideas of its ruling class, those who govern and, and, and govern over these complex of social and economic institutions. Imagine growing up black in America, having to work twice as hard to be just as good, last in every advantage, first in every disadvantage. High unemployment, high poverty, high dropout rates. That's bad enough. To complicate matters, imagine being dark-skinned. Imagine being a dark-skinned girl. Watch their story. I can remember being in the bathtub asking my mom to put bleach in the water so that my skin would be lighter and so that I could escape the feelings that I had about not being as beautiful, as acceptable, as lovable. If we're all just hanging around and, and a dark-skinned girl will pass by, they'll be, oh, well, she's pretty for a dark-skinned girl. Or, and I'm like, well, what is that supposed to mean? I used to wish that I can wake up one day lighter or wash my face and think that it will change. I thought it was dirt and I tried to clean it off, but it wouldn't come off. Just doing something small as standing in front of the class to do show and tell. I wouldn't look up. I wouldn't make eye contact with anyone. I would hold my toy really tight because I knew my toy loved me, even if they didn't. The controversy between the dark and the light goes back to slavery. The lighter-skinned slaves were the result of the slave master's rape and assault on his property. Black was seen as dirty and negative. No one wanted to be black, and even then, though they were all slaves, division started. There was the house slave and the field slave. The closer one was to the slave master, the better their condition seemed to be. So the saying came about, if you're white, you're all right, if you're brown, stick around, if you're yellow, you're mellow, but if you're black, get back. Watch this clip. With names I heard to describe African Americans, 
light skin, dark skin. And then within the light, there's light bright. Light bright. Light bright. Light bright and almost white. Oreo. Monotone. Cracker. Monochrome. Mulatto. Octoroon. Quadroon. Septum. Yellow. High yellow. High yellow. Probably the most inflammatory that I remember being called piss colored. Fast forward to today. Racism in the general society is also racism in the legal society. I asked Mr. Becker to explain. There's a number of reasons for that. Institutionalized racism, racism from the police department, racism from the prosecutors, racism from juries that are frequently all white, racism from judges who are also well-to-do, affluent, and predominantly white. Uh, there's a lot of uh, intertangled reasons for why uh, poor people and people of color, black and Latino people, have a, a, a more likely chance to be sentenced to a, for a crime and sentenced for a long time in prison. But the pattern of racism is clear. LaShonta Harris is a prosecutor in Prince George's County, Maryland. I asked her to describe racism in the legal system. Racism in the legal system exists mostly in sentencings. Sentencings are unfortunately very different for um, people of color and the people in the majority population. And so like black and brown people and white people, black and brown people get a lot heavier sentencing. Um, and it's really unfortunate. If you look at our jail system, it's full of black and brown people. And it's so unfortunate because they're only 13 or 8% of the population, but they are the, ma the vast majority of a lot of the people who are in jail. So that's the biggest way to see it. Another way you see it is in death penalty sentencing. Um, people of color are sentenced to death three to four times more often than people who are white. And then if the victim is white, it's even more of a disparity. So if there's a white victim and a white person killed that person, if there is another white victim and a black person killed them, it could be the same type of victim, same socioeconomic status of the victim. The person who's black will get three times the sentence that the white person will get. Joel Braithwaite is an attorney in the nation's capital. I asked him to describe racism in the legal system. What you're seeing now is that our our political systems and our legal systems are, dominant, are predominantly white. Even as that continues to change, it changes very slowly. Uh, a, a troubling stat is the fact that not more than 4% of the, the current legal system, all lawyers in America, are minorities. And that's all minorities added up. The biggest mi percentage of minorities in the practice of law are actually white women. And they're minorities based on gender. So. How does racism affect uh, a person's ability? Racism may not necessarily affect the justice you see, but it may affect your perception of the justice system. For example, growing up, I didn't know any black lawyers. I, I, the, in, my, in Monmouth County, New Jersey, I heard if I went back, I'm a graduate of a high school in Monmouth County, New Jersey. If I go back to that county, I'll be one of four black attorneys. In Washington, D.C., I am one of what? maybe a thousand, maybe two thousand in the same geographic space and time. So um, how does it affect, it, how does it affect the, the regular person? It may not necessarily affect them, but it may affect the way they feel about the level of services that they receive. Racial disparities are prevalent in the criminal justice system. While blacks accounted for almost 13 percent of the total U.S. population in 2008, they comprised approximately 28 percent of all persons arrested in that same year and almost 40 percent of the total jail and prison population. There is discrimination at various points in the criminal justice process. Discrimination based on one's racial group has been widely examined in the past, but a relatively new body of research explores discrimination within racial groups particularly in regard to the perceived darkness or lightness of a black person's skin tone. The Villanova study found that light-skinned women were sentenced to an average of 12% less time than their darker-skinned peers and certain average of 11% less time in jail. I asked our professionals why skin color is a discriminating factor. As America was premised on an on a ideology of white supremacy to justify slavery since 1610, you know, that's more than 400 years. Uh, that system of enslavement was based on a very particular kind of apartheid, an apartheid based on skin color. And uh, the darkest uh, African uh, people who were here uh, were reserved for labor in the fields. Lighter skinned 
Africans or African-American people as the African-American nation developed uh, had opportunities to have different kinds of position in the plantation, in the slave plantation, sometimes working in a kitchen or in the home. In other words, less back-breaking labor, not under the sun, uh, less arduous. But there were uh, differentiations based on how far you were away from whiteness. Uh, based on the system of uh, racism and apartheid in America. Again, a very unique system because it's the only country in the world where human enslavement, and in this case the enslavement of Africans by Europeans, became the premise for the beginning of a new economic social system in our modern times, in other words, since the 17th century. And so color has always been used, the gradation of uh, distance from whiteness as the uh, sort of selective basis for additional punishments, uh, additional allocation for hard labor or backbreaking labor, lower wages, etc. I may not necessarily have an answer for that question, but what I would say is that um, when something, when when you have an interaction with a police officer um, and or anybody else, and you don't have the money, because I, I think that's like I said, the economics plays more of an important role, and you don't have the money and to hire an attorney, for example, to have proper counsel, to put on a proper defense, and you don't have the economic resources to do all of these things. And we could tell that you won't have the resources based on some part, you could tell based on race that you're most likely not gonna have certain resources because of where you grew up and all these different, and, and all those sorts of factors, all the different circles you were excluded from and opportunities you were excluded from based on race and geography. Um, the perception is out there that black people don't receive or dark people or darker people don't receive a fair shake of the stick. For example, Latinos. Latinos run the gamut from light to dark. So they may be Caucasian apparent and they may be as dark as the Afro-Latinos. And even within the, the, the Latin uh, culture, dark Latinos will report being feeling discriminated against like light Latinos. I know in Jamaica, for example, there's the same uh, color issue in terms of light Jamaicans uh, feeling that receiving preferential treatment. For example, if you look at Jamaica, and I can't really speak, I can only speak on what I see. You asked about skin color. Mm -hmm. You look at the skin tone of Miss Jamaica, and you look at the skin tone of the presidents and the prime ministers of Jamaica, it may not be necessarily reflective of what you think and consider to be Jamaican. And I'm not making this statement with any sort of authoritative uh, um, power behind me, but I think it's a perception issue. And it continues all throughout the Caribbean. Um, and it continues to affect us even today in America. I think skin color factors in because a lot of media representations of people who are bad are dark skin. I mean, from Darth Vader to Nino Brown. I mean, they're always people of darker skin, and I think that feeds into the decision-making process of jurors and of judges because they're so used to seeing people who are dark-skinned being convicted of crimes and being arrested and having interactions with the police that it becomes standard and they're used to seeing it. And they are more inclined to believe that a person who is of darker skin, who is the same person who they see on TV and all these movies and in the news, they're more likely to believe that that person committed a crime. And so they don't always give them the benefit of the doubt. And also, I mean, people who are lighter skinned I think are viewed as more positive and um, more likely to have made a mistake and had more opportunities and um, a criminal encounter is more of an anomaly, I think, in people's minds. But obviously that's not true because we all know criminals who are light-skinned and criminals who are dark-skinned. We know really good people who are light-skinned and really good people who are dark-skinned. But I think that, that brainwashing that we get feeds in so much. I mean, when you think about the fact that during slavery, dark-skinned people are the ones who had the worst jobs, who got the worst food, who had the worst of everything, I think that that began a process that is permeated throughout society and that exists in 2011. Previous research has explored the relationship between skin tone and life chances among blacks. Blacks with lighter skin tone and facial features more indicative of a European-American descent, i.e. thin nose, thin lips, smooth hair, appear to be more likely to be accepted in mainstream society and thus afforded greater opportunities and privilege. Other research suggested those with a lighter skin tone are more likely to be members of a higher social class and achieve a higher occupational and educational level than their darker skin counterparts. Furthermore, 
there's evidence that darker skin tones are associated with higher degrees of housing segregation. Overall, this body of research strongly suggests that lighter skin tone is associated with greater life chances. I asked people on the street if there were social advantages to being light skin. In some realms, yes, because they would be looked upon as uh, more appropriate for whatever the venue might be or um, just prettier, just prettier. Yes, I do think that it is some type of advantages of being lighter complexion. I think that's been going on for a long time. There might be in the minds of some people. Um, people still unfortunately think light is better. And so you may find that people in the media, for example, like newscasters and you know anchors tend to be lighter. Even um, when it comes on to movie roles, lighter people tend to get the parts, like Halle Berry and so on. So unfortunately, there is. I, I know that back in the day, um, even in my own family, I noticed that my parents treated my sister and I differently. My sister is of a lighter hue, but I don't know if in today's society there are any advantages at all. From my experiences, I would say there's a perception that there's an advantage for the mulatto. I call it the mulatto syndrome. For example, you have discrimination within the race light skins against black skins, black skins against light skins, and that might be some would consider a preference amongst the majority for a preference for light, lighter skin blacks. Well, statistically, I think that uh, you do find that lighter skin minorities do better in society in terms of promotions, and uh, I think we need to examine why that is happening. Listen to how our experts answered the question, are there social advantages to being light-skinned? I'm not sure if I'm light. Um, I think I'm brown, uh, which may put me in the middle of the spectrum. Uh, societal advantages to being lighter-skinned. I think some people uh, may have preferences for fair-skinned people. Um, uh, within my family, there's a, a, a diverse range of color. Um, as to whether they get treated better than others, I'm not sure, but that may be the case, um, or it may not be. Um, so I, I can't really speak definitively as to advantages that people of fair skin uh, may face, but I know uh, as between, if you, and I think the only time you really get to get to the advantage that it may place is only if you have a choice. If I have the ability to choose between you and you, and I make the choice, that's when it, you could probably see it best. Well, those ones, um, first of all, the fact that you're less likely to be considered a criminal by the general population. Um, juries are probably less likely to convict you. Judges are less likely to give you a harsher sentence. Um, police are probably less likely to interact with you and investigate you and suspect you of wrongdoing. Um, because I just think, you know, if you're white, you're all right. I think that plays a part in how people look at light-skinned people, whether it's because they think that they're closer to white. So, and I'm sure it's not a conscious thing. I'm sure people don't think, well, it's because they have some white in them, so that makes them better. I don't think it's that, but I do think that in the back of their mind, they associate more positive things with people who are light-skinned instead of people who are dark-skinned. And it's so unfortunate. Some recent research, besides the Villanova study, has documented the quantifiable advantages associated with having a lighter skin shade, particularly in terms of occupational attainment and earnings among blacks. A handful of studies focusing on black men also have suggested that when authorities perceive offenders as having a lighter skin shade, it translates into more lenient criminal justice outcomes. I asked our professionals, are there any other factors that determine racism in the legal system? Well, I think it's the economics of it. It's your ability to put on an offensive, your ability to uh, probably not even be in certain situations, uh, for example. Uh, if you don't have the money to, to not live in a certain neighborhood, then you're going to live in the neighborhood. And whether you're a victim of crime or you're someone that um, you get involved in certain activities that are 
probably the only activities that they have for you in the neighborhood. Um, I think you could even see it in terms of like uh, community centers, for example, community centers and libraries and schools and proper schools that are going to graduate people and, and get them to college and not only get them to college, but get them to college prepared to succeed in college and prepared to have them graduate from college. Um, so now we're not only talking about the high school graduation rate, we're talking about the college graduation rate and the actual uh, sustainability and making these uh, youth into uh, properly functioning adults. That, that, there is a correlation with race, and, uh, and I do believe there to be a correlation between race and their ability to uh, make it through all these various systems and then succeed uh, when they get to uh, later stages. Poverty, neighborhoods. Um People who live in poor communities with less job opportunities, poorer schools, have less opportunities outside of their neighborhoods. So they're going to be more inclined to commit certain kinds of crimes. Because we all know about people who wear suits, who work in 75-story buildings, who commit lots of crimes. But the people that we hear about on the street, um, those people tend to be people who might be of a lower socioeconomic status and unfortunately that plays a factor. Another thing that plays a factor in at least uh, the people who are arrested and convicted of crimes is educational level. If you're smarter, you know how to hide your crimes. The study's authors conclude that it is not sufficient to just understand racial discrimination in terms of advantages of whites compared to non-whites. Among blacks, Characteristics associated with whiteness appear to also have a significant impact on important life outcomes. On the streets of D.C., I asked people what needed to be done to change this discrimination. I think there has to be knowledge among employers that uh, we do have EEO available, Equal Employment Opportunity, and that's not only a matter of race, but it's a matter of color, that there cannot be prohibited discrimination. Absolutely nothing. Educate more, say that there are people of all shades and colors and you know there there isn't any advantage to being a specific skin color. I'm not even sure if there is a solution because it's all going to be perception on how you feel about yourself. I don't know I think people should stop looking at people as a color and just start looking at people as just people because the nicest people could be the darkest people or the nicest people could be the lightest people. I just think it's just all about self and not color. It has to do with self-awareness. It has to come from home with little ones instill in little black kids that black is beautiful and uh, we take it from there. Those were the solutions from the streets. Here are the solutions from our professionals. What can be done is uh, I would say a multi-layered attack on existing status quo norms of what's good, what's beautiful. So it has to be in the streets and street protests, it has to be in religious institutions, it has to be in schools. Wherever people are facing discrimination based on skin color or gender, there has to be an assault against those kinds of institutions of discrimination and a raising up of a different way of thinking and being. And I think we see that from the ground up through all sorts of organizations in the United States, especially in the last 60 years. Well, the problem with race is that race is an illusion. Uh, there is no genetic basis for race. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, if I just give you DNA, if you just were to have someone's DNA, you will not be able to tell race based on DNA. Um, so to the extent that there isn't a biological uh, basis for race, and race is more of a political and social construct, and you can't tell pilgrims race by their blood. And these are like the building blocks of life. And I guess you can't tell their race by their heart if you can't tell them by their blood or by, by their DNA. So, in terms of, so it seems to me that uh, we need to start understanding that there are cultural things that we attach to race and understand that, for example, it's something special to be Jamaican. It's something special to be from Brooklyn. It's something special. And those are sorts of affinity things that kind of give you kinship with other people. What can we do about this? We can celebrate the positive dark-skinned people that we see. Um, we can discourage people from talking negatively about people who are dark sin. Um, like when you hear, you know, people telling a joke or people making fun of somebody and they throw in the fact that they're dark skin, we should be able to counteract that. And this is on one-on-one -on -one level. So you should be able to counteract that and say, well, what does that have to do with the fact that, you know, he curses too much and smokes too much? What does what is, what is these dark skin have to do with that? So I think us being willing to challenge each other on it and to say, well, 
can't say that because I know dark skinned people who do X, Y, and Z. I think that would make a really big difference. America claims her justice is blind. Then why are so many blacks and Latinos incarcerated? Why would I receive more convictions and more jail time if I look like this than if I look like this? That's racism in the legal system. For Press TV in Washington, I'm Nisa Islam. You said if you was white, you'd be all right. If you was brown, stick around. But as you black, oh brother, get back, get back, get back.